Welcome to Wake Up with Pastor Scott and Pastor Jason Anderson from Living Word Bible Church in Mesa, Arizona. Grab a cup of coffee and enjoy this daily dose of scripture and morning prayer. Brought to you by Christian Living Radio. So, this, and you can see there a little bit. It's really light, but you can see how you look. I can. Yeah. And Which I never... Try and envision what your wife would say if she saw it. You know, that's what I do. I was like, <laughs> yeah, oh, she, she would not... You know, no. Like, no matter what, oh, she'd be no, like, what are you doing? Hunchy. If I do that, you I'll, I'll, white? I won't this speak. <laughs> Put a little yeah. drool. So, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Be Is my hair blending in with the, with the sky? <laughs> well, it, it, all, it yeah. looks like I have no hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it does. We do that because I'm losing my hair. It actually makes me it feel better like... if it looks like you have zero hair. Oh, I'm hair. glad I can help you feel better. <laughs> it's blending <today>. in. <laughs> It's, it's totally. I'm, I'm, it's like a green screen. Yes, it's my hair is like a green screen. That's we'll great. be right back. Welcome to Wake Up, a daily Bible study from Pastors Scott and Jason Anderson. A morning scripture with your morning coffee, brought to you by Living Word. We encourage you to wake up with us every morning by watching us on YouTube. Visit wakeuptv.tv or search Daily Bible Study on YouTube. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Scott. We have a I'm guest. Dennis Burke. Oh my gosh, it is so nice to have Dr. Dennis with us. Thank you. What an incredible message this weekend. Me and my wife were talking about it even still this morning. And uh, it Mm -hmm. was like one of those ones I'm like, oh my gosh, you could could go months on this. So I I saw a family uh, sitting in the service after the 915 service. And I said, oh, are you staying for the 11? And they go, yeah. We went Saturday night and heard it. We came back at 915, got it again, and we decided we're going to stay one more time. Wow. Right. It was that good. Wow. It was. It was hit you hard. And I'm not. I'm not That's talking. Great. If any of our guest speakers are, are listening right now, I'm not talking about you. But there are guest speakers because we sit through three or four of these. Yeah. And a lot of times I'm like, oh, not again. I have to wake him this up. This is the one though. I was like fired up. up. <laughs> well, I was, that's good. I was good to hear it again and again, <laughs> and it was uh, it was good. So at the end, you'll be able to listen to some of it and some of it tomorrow also. Yeah. What's our scripture today? Um, I think we're going to be in 2 Corinthians, but we're reading from your version. You know, I've used the Passion yeah. Yeah. Translation, no, which, was... um, you know, has just gotten really, got a hold of me. I've really enjoyed the Passion Translation. I use translations a lot of times, just all kinds of different ones, uh, because these smart people make these things and do all this work, and then you read it and you sound smart. And, and, <laughs> then you sound smart. And, uh, <laughs> and you get to join that, in the smartness that, of the right. entire... Environment. I need, I feel like there's through. smartness coming in right, because right. someone else did the homework. Somebody you know, else did the work. And I when my wife smartness. started reading the Passion, I was like, well, let me check that out. And yeah. I went into mm. the, my Greek and Hebrew libraries, right. and I did all my... Th- and I was thinking to myself, I'm going to be the smart guy in this one. Uh, it, it, the Passion really nails it. Yeah. It's a great translation. It just is. I try to do the same thing, but I don't know Greek or Hebrew, so it just... <laughs> you can always pretend. So I took my English. Just pretend. I took my English on it, and it, it was great. <laughs> it was? Yeah. Yeah. English. <laughs> Periods, commas, they were all well, there. They seem yeah. to be great. <laughs> yeah. English is always best for me. <laughs> I'm still working on it. Actually, so. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not there yet. I'm not quite there yet. So, uh, where do you want to jump in? Anywhere you want. You, your choice. Absolutely. Well, in that case, let me jump in early in what I was talking about yesterday. And uh, uh, here's the Apostle Paul's take on on dealing with issues and trouble and pressure. What I was really getting into and what we're talking about here today is how to turn pressure into power. Oh, How things that come to squeeze our life and put us in a place where we're under, you know, feeling squeezed in one way or another pressure-wise, where it's, it's really not designed by God for us to live that way but where we can turn it into power. So, so life is going to have pressure. It's not life, just butterflies and pancakes yeah, it's all day. Just like Christian life, you find, has sometimes even more pressure it does. than you had before you came to know the Lord. And the Bible didn't lie about it. It says you're going to have some stuff in your life when that's, you become Christian. That's and, I, right. and I look at people like, like uh, our dad, yeah. you know, Dr. Tom, who grew up and uh, had a lot more pressure and a lot more against him. He had a lot harder odds. Right. Uh, but the pressure that, and, and then you look at the greatness that was released. Out of the pressure. Out of the pressure. That that, that power of God, the mm-hmm. miracle working power of God comes to so many in the Bible who had really rough beginnings. Very tough. I mean, you know, scripture's full of all of these various heroes from the Bible. Every one of them has a story. Yeah. Every one of them faced really dramatic pressure and hard times and tough stuff. And uh, what it says to all of us is that um, we can go through pressure, but we can take the 
the example of these different leaders and these powerful people and how God used them. And uh, we can get the encouragement to know that the same power is available to us. And now with Jesus dwelling in us, man, we've got access to so much that even in the Old Testament, those heroes, uh, they didn't have the same access that we do. That we do. And so... Uh, but without the pressure, there wouldn't have been a story. If, if David faced a, a four foot eight old woman... On the battlefield, it wouldn't have been a great story. Okay, yeah. unless she beat him, right? Unless she beat him, that'd be a great. Story. That would be a story. <laughs> so you, you needed the pressure, the, the the giant Goliath. That pressure is what catapulted David in the sight of all of Israel. Yeah, and that's what kind of got him set part or set on the course of becoming king of Israel. Without the giant, there wouldn't have been, the, like I said, the power that we got to mm, see expressed. Right, but yeah. without. Without knowing that power ahead of time, when right. David went into that situation, um, it wouldn't have turned out the same. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. You've got to know something is real on the inside. You've got to know that God's really got answers for you, that you don't have to be squeezed by life and get all the life squeezed out of you. You've got to know so that good. the Word really is deposited inside, and you have the capacity to step up and see God really deliver you out of whatever has come along. So um, that, that to me is, is what Paul's talking about. Second Corinthians and a lot of what we looked at yesterday, um, Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, where he, he talks about these common clays, these common clay jars is what he calls us here. And uh, let me just read how it reads here from uh, verse seven, where he says, we are like common clay jars that carry this glorious treasure mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. so that the extraordinary overflow of power will be seen as God's and not ours. Yeah. Oh, wow. Common clay jars. So here's the deal we all know. We're all just regular folks. <laughs> We're all just plain people dealing with real issues, real problem. We're just uh, not superhuman but man, we've got a treasure on the inside oh, yeah. that really is that divine Holy Spirit, extraordinary, I love the term, extraordinary, overflowing power yeah. that we can access. Yeah. And sometimes we think, well, that's for someone else, or we think that, but, but I love how he says it. He says, we. Yeah. Right? He's Paul. Like, he could have right. said, I. Yeah, me. He could have said, I, listen, I got a lot of power. I yeah, wish yeah, you yeah. had the power. I got some yeah. treasure I've got in the my power. mud pot. <laughs> <laughs> you said mud. Here you said go. mud pot on the weekend, and yeah, my yeah. daughter is still laughing about this. She's like, <laughs> right. Oh, she still loves mud mud, mud pot. But we 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 all have this mud pot, which kind of makes us feel bad about ourselves, and tries to make us feel insecure, and has all the wrong things to say mm -hmm. into our future. But Paul's saying we, and so so we're saying that every you're watching this. This he's talking about mm -hmm. you. It's not for someone else. This is for you. For today, to know that you have on the inside of you what you need to win. You have the power, but if you don't know how to act, if you don't access it, what does it mean anything? Right. I'm looking uh, the other day. I know my keys go in two spots. I couldn't find them. Couldn't find them. What I didn't know was that Holly had left them in the glove box of my car. Now, my car is a car that can, It's if the keys are in there, it just starts. You okay. Put yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. You push the button. I didn't know that all I had to do is go outside and push the button and my car be ready to go. And so I'm searching for everything out there. And I think that people oftentimes are searching for the power out there. They're searching out there, not realizing that you have it. You just need to access it, push the button. It's, it's in the glove box. It's in the glove it's box. <laughs> and it's ready to go. Wow. It's ready to go. That's a good one. Good. You know, this treasure concept that God gives us is just the rich deposit of God that uh, sadly lies dormant in too many people. It's there. Wow. The ac access is available to anybody that will take it, but it's, it's only the people that really take hold of it. And that's what you've got an opportunity to do right now is just access the treasure that's on the inside. I love it. It's the deposit of God. It's the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. And all of the things we know about Scripture already just points to the fact that you've got what it takes. Right. You're not waiting for heaven to do something more. Because Jesus is Lord in your life right now. And man, uh, that means the, when the pressure's on, you have what it takes right. to rise up with the Spirit of God on the inside of you and push back. 
And I like what you said, now is the time. I think a lot of people are waiting for something special or big to happen, yeah. not realizing that right now you could make your marriage better. Right mm -hmm. now you could make your job better. Right now you could make your... Right now you've got the power to begin to make it with your children, your teenagers, whatever it is, to begin to press forward in the power that you already have. Start your car up, hit the button, mm -hmm. and begin to drive towards what God has for you in your future. We, we talk about this some more tomorrow. We are. Uh, would you mind praying over their, their day? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we are just so grateful for your blessing in our life. We're so delighted that these people in the audience are a part of this today. And God, we pray for a real revelation from God as to your deposit within them, that this is the day that you have made, and we are rejoicing and glad in it. Father, let that flood through them, spirit, soul, and body in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Enjoy this clip. But God has not forsaken us. We're not alone. You know, sometimes family can turn on you. Not everybody in your family maybe is all that excited about what you know now about Jesus. Sometimes you can feel like a failure because your family is not really responding all that well to you. Well, you know, it's just not all about you. <laughs> oh, did I just pop a bubble? Man, I felt like one of them burst. But uh, if it is, if it's not about you. And so really, it's really not about you trying to make sure your family turns out just right in every instance and believes everything exactly right. Somewhere along the line, we do have to believe God wants this for our families even more than we do. Amen. But then he says it this way, <clears throat> still in verse 9. He said, we may be knocked down, but we're not knocked out. I love that line. Knocked down. This is Paul. He said even, even him. He may have been knocked down. I don't know. There's a weird kind of twisted comfort in knowing that Paul felt pressure, felt persecuted, was knocked down, and didn't always know exactly what to do. I don't know. I'm, is that like misery loves company? I, we don't want that. But, but here's how he handled it. Here's how he dealt with it. Here's the mindset that it takes. He said, we're not crushed. We're not quitting, we're not forsaken, and we're not out. And that's what really has to emerge out of every one of us. This isn't just positive thinking, this is real believing. But here's in verse 13, he gives us part of the key to why this really works. In verse 13, he says, we have the same spirit of faith that is described in Scripture when it says, first we believed... Then I spoke in faith. And then he goes on and says, so we also first believe. Then we speak in faith. What you believe matters. What you say releases power. What you believe counts. We have to believe right. Right believing is mandatory really. Doesn't mean we know everything to believe just right. We've, we grow, we change, we modify, we increase. But what's vital is that we put what we believe in our own lips. I not only believe God wants me well, I declare I am the healed. I not only believe that God has, has promised to prosper my life, I declare I prosper in everything I set my hands to do. And I don't just say it in church or when somebody leads me in it or when Pastor Scott or Holly begin to give me things to say. I'm saying it all the time. In casual conversation, I mean, even if the TV, and every so often the TV talks to me because, of the, you know, I've turned it on. <laughs> if you don't like what the TV says, you know, just don't watch it. But, uh, but even when it says, you know, flu season has come. Or white shoe season has passed. <laughs> Even when it says, got a few more days. I mean, even I knew of Labor Day, you know. <laughs> All right, I got to wait till the last service to really get off into that. But, because um, he's got another stab at me here. Uh, But well, we're rule breakers around here. We're not, we're not governed by the calendar. We're governed by something else. Anyway, we'll work on that. But I think you got it already. 
Okay, sorry I brought that up. But in spite of all of the various strategies that come at us, the way Satan tries to corral us and tries to squeeze us, we've found how to equalize and even neutralize this pressure. And we use our words. We even say it when we're by ourselves. Man, I say these things. If I'm driving in the car, the TV talks to me, says flu season has come. I talk back. Doesn't come to my house. I mean, some people, they prepare and plan for it, man. They buy new pajamas. They go out and fill their cabinet with all kinds of medicines and stuff, get their prescription renewed and all this kind of stuff because the flu season coming. Now, we're going to be spending some time in bed. They just plan for it. They expect it. Not me, not my house. And I just go ahead and declare it. Amen. All right. So we believe and then we speak. Listen, there is a, something real important. And, and I learned this in, in snorkel diving. I grew up in Southern California and I liked water stuff. And I'd, I'd snorkel dive and chase fish and shoot them. And, uh, <laughs> which I felt was a lot more fair than deceiving them into biting into a hook and then yanking them out of their environment. You know, I just felt like chasing them gave them more of a, at least honest, fair chance. <laughs> All right, I never really thought about that, but it just seemed to fit. So, uh, but I learned this, and you learn it even swimming in a deep, deep end of the pool, man. You learn that uh, the water pressure can really limit how deep you're going to end up going. You get down 8, 10 feet, man, and you're done, man. I mean, the pressure is more than you're going to be able to endure and take for much longer. You're sure not going to go much deeper because the water pressure presses on your ears, and it's painful. But you can learn how to... Equalize the pressure. It's not hard. You just pinch your nose and blow. And boom, man, your ears pop. And uh, then what? You get to go deeper. It's not all that hard. You learn how to create more pressure from the inside than what's coming at you from the outside. And then it's as if there's no pressure at all. We live our life not free from pressure, but we live our life able to equalize and neutralize its ability to impact our life, our thinking, or our future. We're not going to be moved by these events and this pressure that tries to come at us because we've discovered the key. We figured out how to live in this world, not free from pressure, but free from the effects of allowing it to change our life or determine our future. Because we learned how this deposit inside of us doesn't have to come fresh out of heaven. It's already been born into us by the new birth and by this infusion of the Holy Spirit within. And when we decide to not allow God to any longer have to lie dormant within our life, but we access this pressure and release something within, it neutralizes this pressure on the outside. And it feels as if there's no pressure whatsoever. It's amazing how this works. To hear this message in its entirety, visit wakeuptv.tv and click on YouTube. Paul gives us even further insight in chapter 12. Let's drop down to chapter 12. I want to be sure you get this because this is finally going to be my text for this message today. And so it's going to be a very short message. But in chapter 12, he says it this way. In verse 7, he says, The extraordinary level of revelations... I've received is no reason for anyone to exalt me. For this is why a thorn in my flesh was given to me. Say given. Given. See, a lot of people have had the weird idea that God gave Paul something to keep him humble because he had so many revelations. But wait, 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 wait. God's the one that gave him the revelations. Surely he knows what revelation does to a person. It's not about him puffing up. It's about him growing up in the things God showed him, so there was given to him something, but it didn't come by God. There was a thorn, he said, a thorn in the flesh given to him. But he says right here how it came. He said it was the adversary's messenger who sent it to harass me. He was sent to harass Paul. Who sent this messenger? He said it right there. Come on, this is open book. Uh, (laughs) Messenger of who? Who? The adversary. All right. We got it. It came from the adversary. And he came to 
threatened these revelations that Paul had received, just like it comes at us in one way or another. Satan has given a messenger to harass you too. And comes at you in different forms and fashions and different ways. Messenger of the enemy that has come to unravel revelation that God has given you already of the goodness of God and the love he has for you and the promise that he's made of various things. Those ideas come by the spirit of God, but a messenger of Satan comes to dumb it down and to change it so that you won't walk in it. Paul called it a thorn in the flesh, whatever that was. And he doesn't tell us anything more than this. It was a messenger of the devil. There's a real war going on. And it's a war against your success and victory. That's why when you come here, I love this place. And and Pastor Scott even said, man, this is a place committed to bringing you into a greater place of success, of joy, of laughter, of what life was designed for. But there's an enemy to all of this. And he's going to look for what will squeeze you, pressure you. Maybe the way somebody talked or didn't talk or said something or didn't say something or they didn't shake my hand or they didn't look at me just right. Did you see what they did to me? And whatever it is that flips your switch and ticks you off. Can you say that in church? Is that all right? Ticks you off. (laughs) You know, like too late. (laughs) But uh, whatever it is, whatever's come to harass you. Whatever flips your switch, if Satan finds a way to squeeze you, it begins to crush and squeeze the real life and joy out of you. But God's given you a substance, a treasure. So watch how this goes. Paul said this. In verse 8, he said, three times I played with the Lord to relieve me of this. This is Paul praying this prayer. God, get this off of me. Isn't that what we want? We want God to do it. But look at what God said. He didn't say he was going to get it off of Paul. He said, my grace is more than enough for you. Now, here's what that does not mean. It does not mean that God said, no, Paul, you're going to have to live with this the rest of your life. And you're just going to have to grow up to understand that this is the cross you have to bear. Whatever it is, whatever that thorn was all about, whatever the devil had done, is just something you're just going to have to have and live with the rest of your life. No, that wasn't the message at all. He said, my grace is enough for you, more than enough, and finds its full expression in your weakness. You don't have to feel condemned because of weakness. You and I get to understand that weakness becomes the place of power. And here it is. Watch this. At the end of verse 10, well, I'll read all of verse 10. He said, so I'm not defeated By my weakness, but delighted. Drop down to the last line of verse 10. This is so powerful. For my weakness becomes a portal to God's power. Glory to God. My weakness is no longer what brings me down. It becomes the place for power. So I don't have to live with this weakness one moment longer. I identify that even though I feel like I haven't had what it takes, I've locked into a God who is more than enough to deal with whatever comes at me. And my weakness has today become a place for power. We can delight in what has tried to defeat us. Not because we live with it any longer, but because it becomes a place for power. We live in the power because we dig into it. We release the treasure. We believe it, but then we declare it. And I want you to stand with me right now, and we're going to declare this together. Glory to God. Weakness is not going to derail us, defeat us, discourage us. Nope, nope, nope. We're believers around here. Say it out loud. I'm a believer. And I declare... That even this weakness, the threat, the discouragement that tried to come, the bad report that seemed like death sentence on me, I'm not defeated by it. I'm delighted in this moment because I've become a portal of power. I receive that power 
the treasure is in me, floods through me, and drives every bit of that weakness out. I'm a conqueror because I've locked into Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Come on, shout a praise to Jesus. It's all about his power born inside of your life. Glory to God. We don't trust ourselves, but we do trust him. And he's given us more than enough of his grace to deal with all this trash. Glory to God. Aren't you glad? Come on, shout a praise to the Lord again. Thank you, Jesus. Are you glad you came today? Man, you're in the zone right now. This is the place that things shift and change. This is when life takes on a whole new place. I mean, I don't care how it was as you walked in the door. I mean, I do care, but I don't care. You know, I mean, I care. Okay, I care. Uh, You know, uh, but I don't care. And how it was when you walked in, because we're walking out different. We've tapped a treasure. Came because of Jesus Christ. We're not trusting our own ability here now. We're tied in to that deposit within. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now, just a moment, Pastor Scott's going to come. They've got a few things they got to do also before things wrap up. I want to remind you, though, before I'm done, I brought materials that are out on the table. I really want you to get a hold of this, and I'm so excited to tell you that Vicki's great book on, called Some Days You Dance is now also an MP3 audio book, and it's available to download. We've got a few left on the table. The early services were quite greedy, so they were not thinking of you. But there are a few left that's also downloadable, or we'll be happy to send, send it to you if you'd like it that way. But uh, Some Days You Dance, it is... It is really such a powerful testimony, but teaching of how Vicki dealt with having hit the wall herself a number of years ago now, but real issues, real trouble. She'd served God, walked in Christ, walked in ministry, married to me for a lot of years. And certainly I know I contributed to her hitting the wall, you know, which is what guys do. But, uh, but she discovered from God some things that she dug into that grace and the power of the word that just exploded things in her life in a brand new way. And it's just one of the most powerful things we've ever produced. And so the book's available, but also now the MP3 audio book. And we're just excited that's available for you. Lots of other things. You still glad you came today? Yeah. Come on, shout another praise to the Lord. Amen. God bless you, living word. God, God bless you, Scottsdale. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Give us a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Share it. Get it out there. And if you want, you can subscribe. You can watch this. If you're on the radio, watching us on the radio, yes. you can simply uh, go to YouTube, type in Daily Bible Study. And <laughs> Jason wants to say something so bad right there. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. I only have things to say about my brother. Be in this- church this weekend. Thanks again for joining us today. Find out more or stay connected with Wake Up at wakeuptv.tv. You can also subscribe to our daily text reminders for Wake Up Daily Bible Study, which includes a direct link to the next day's episode by texting Wake Up, no spaces, to 84483. That's Wake Up to 84483. Thank you for listening to Wake Up on Christian Living Radio. Start your day every day with a positive word and prayer. We'll see you tomorrow morning.